기대를 정말 많이 하면서 지켜봤습니다. 반전 스토리로 너무 기억에 남고요. 그 누구도 말릴 수 없습니다. 소름입니다. 꼭 보세요. The last remaining land on Earth, GSL. The fierce fight between heroes began. Don't even dare to predict the end. Full of conspiracies and betrayals beyond our imagination. I come. Many twists and upsets to the plot. The best mystery thriller of all time is coming. 신나요? 아 보고 깜짝 놀랐습니다. 어 제가 생각했던 모든 예상이 빗나갔다라고나 할까요? 김민철과 이영환 또 김민철과 조성규의 그 쾌쾌해 묵은 인간 관계가 그 인간 상성이 모두 깨어지는 엄청난 반전. 소름입니다. 여러분 꼭 보세요. 대박. The all-star studded cast ever in history. Zest, Innovation, Sulky, Stork. A master of hyperrealism acting. God Stork. 기대를 정말 많이 하면서 지켜봤습니다. 여러모로 뭐 16강에 진출할 때 눈빛 자체가 살아 있었기 때문에 저뿐만이 아니라 많은 올드 팬분들의 뭐 주먹에 힘이 들어가는 이런 상황을 많이 만들지 않았나 이런 생각이 들면서 Rediscovery of new rising stars who finally shine after a long wait. True, Solar, Paralyze, Classic. 일단 스토리도 참 마음에 들었어요. 모든 사람들의 예상에 뛰어없는 반전 스토리도 너무 기억에 남고요. 캐스팅도 이렇게 경력이 많은 분부터 신인까지 다양하게 어우러져 있어서 촬영하는 내내 너무 행복했던 것 같아요. 무엇보다 제가 또 홍익점이었기 때문에 더 마음에 들고요. This fierce battle is a matter of life and death. A touching true story of overcoming their limitations. The great saga of heroes. To take up the land, GSL. 제가 데뷔 6년 만에 처음으로 맡은, 맡은 주인공이고 제가 아무튼 이렇게 주목받은 것도 처음인 것 같아서 아, 말로 표현할 수 없을 정도로 네, 기쁘네요. 3회 연속 주인공을 맡게 되는데 이런 경우는 제가 처음이라 너무 당연한 것 같아요. 뭐저 정도 되면 은 주인공 맞는 건 당연하고 그동안 같은 회사에서 잘 나가는 배우들이 저를 좀 무시하고 그런 게 있었는데 아 누구냐고요? 음, 미남 배우 정모 씨하고 어, 성격파 배우 원모 씨를 하고 있어요. 그런데 제가 뭐 이번에는 제가 주연으로 캐스팅 됐는데 이제 무시 못하겠죠. 이번 작품 하면서 가장 고마운 사람은 테스예요. 어, 악당 주성욱을 알아서 치워줘서 테스야 고맙다. 네, 아무래도 가장 힘들었던 장면은 어, 16강 때가 아니지 싶어요. 같은 팀들을 물리치는 역할이어서 굉장히 힘들었었는데 어, 어른수 씨가 굉장히 분노 연기를 잘해준 것 같아서 되게 고맙고 어, 저를 분노 연기의 대가라고 칭찬 많이들 해주시는데 그게 연기라고 생각하세요? <웃음> 네, 뭐 GSL에서도 3회 연속 주인공도 했고 뭐 경험도 많고 노련하고 네, 정말 훌륭한 배우죠. 근데 뭐딱 거기까지인 것 같아요. 어, 주인공감은 아니고 아무리 봐도 조연? 만년 조연인 걸 인정해야 될것 같아요. 어, 도우 형, 음, 난 생처럼 주인공 맡았다고 지금 굉장히 들떠있는데 난 단골 식당 온 것처럼 되게 편해. 형은 그 정도면 은 많이 올라왔잖아. 자꾸 욕심내면 은 이사기처럼 페인 만들 거니까. 나 하나 무서운 거 알지? He finally walked from the dark side and loomed up his enormous presence. Immortal Shadow. Classic. 동안 싸운 내공이 굉장히 많았죠. 예. 그 아무래도 6년간의 시간이 있었기 때문에 아는 것도 많을 테고 그게 이번 엔딩 장면에 충분히 다 쏟아낼 수 있으면 은 크게 성공할 것 같습니다. Don't ever make me angry. God of wrath. Sue. 주변의 모든 장점을 흡수하고 있는 어윤수는 정말 완벽합니다. 분노 모드를 발동했을 때만큼 정말 그 누구도 말릴 수 없습니다. 이번에도 그런 게 분노 모드가 발동이 된다고 하면은 최후의 일인이 될수 있겠죠. This masterpiece of the century is heating up this summer of 2014. 그까지 반전이 무엇인지 보여드리겠습니다. 
예상할 수 없는 극적인 반전. 섀도우의 활약을 기대해 주세요. 저번에 두번나 비욘의 주인공 역할을 맡아가지고 어, 이번만큼은 진짜 싫어요. 이번에는 제 팬딩을 보실 수 있을 겁니다. 기대하세요. It will hit theaters worldwide on June 28th. Final Destination, GSL Season 2, Epic. It's time, Artosis. Wow, that movie trailer right there. I would go and watch. Oh, wait a minute. I am going to watch that. Tasis, because it's today. Oh, wait a minute. I am going to watch that. Tasis, because it's today. Oh, wait a minute. I am going to watch that. Tasis, because it's today. Oh, wait a minute. I am going to watch that. Tasis, because it's today. Oh, wait a minute. I am going to watch that. Tasis, because it's today. Oh, wait a minute. I am going to watch that. Tasis, because it's today. Oh, wait a minute. I am going to watch that. Tasis, because it's today. Oh, wait a minute. I am going to watch that. Tasis, because it's today. Oh, wait a minute. I am going to watch that. Tasis, because it's today. Oh, wait a minute. I am going to watch that. Tasis, because it's today. Oh, wait a minute. I am going to watch that. Tasis, because it's today. Oh, wait a minute. I am going to watch that. Tasis, because it's today. Oh, wait a minute. I am going to watch that. Tasis, because it's today. Oh, wait a minute. I am going to watch that. Tasis, because it's today. Oh, wait a minute. I am going to watch that. Right. Now, and here we go, Tasis. Nice t-shirt on that nerd. Yeah, yeah. Looks pretty handsome to me. Yeah, it looks like a handsome nerd to me down there. All right. So let's bring out our first player classic. And absolutely yes. legendary Protoss now. Well, uh, one of the newest of the new. You know, uh, and we've gone through a lot of new Protosses. He, he uh, has been year. around for a while. You know, classic. About his his career is over five years old at this point now, but this is his first time really standing out. It's been a long journey. He went through a lot of fantastic players to get here now. Yeah, and uh, he's going to be facing off against his teammate. His That's teammate, right. in fact, Sue. Uh, now this is Sue's third finals in a row. In a row, which is absolutely unheard of. Uh, you don't ever see people get the finals back to back to back. And what's more interesting about that is he hasn't won a finals yet. Look, back to back only happened once, and it was Nest T. Right. Just to show you how ridiculous this is, the game is a lot harder now in different ways than it was back then. There's a lot of contenders at this moment. The so trying to get three in a row, this is like an unheard of feat. This is more impressive than winning a GSL is making three finals. That is. Sure. And the strats are changing, the maps are changing, the metagame's changing, but he's still here. So, eager now to win this time in a GSL Code S Finals. You know, we have uh, GSLs more spaced out now than they were in previous mm -hmm. years. So, the fact that this is his third time here is really remarkable. Yeah, everything about it, just this is such a hard situation. And now we're going to interview our two players and see what their thoughts are going into this match and anything they want to say to each other or the fans. Over here on my right is Classic. So right now, it feels to me like you're the main character of this uh, stage. How do you feel? I'm looking at um, is the season finals already two times. Sue sees finals two times. But, but he's, you know, he's made his opponents look incredible while staying, keeping in the second spot. So I'm going to be um, like that too and get first here. A lot of fans out there are uh, are pretty impressed with your performances. You haven't showed um, results like this so far. You hadn't even reached the top four before now. Can you really show these people here today uh, a championship? Well, Sue has also made it back to the finals, but never wins uh, the first place mark. So I'm expecting him to repeat that here today uh, and be the loser with me coming out on top. So yeah, I'm very confident. So this is your, you're the first person ever in GSL history to have you in a finals three times in a row. How do you feel? Firstly, Classic doesn't deserve to make such comments about me. I don't really think his level is actually the same as mine. So there are a lot of fans who have been following you for a while now. 
Are you gonna Are you gonna be following in Yellow's uh, history in StarCraft One, always getting second? I know that there are some fans that are uh, that are that'll think it'll be funny if I do follow in Yellow's history. But I do think there are still a lot of people out there um, who think I'm actually better than Classic, and I'm gonna prove that today. So this is your third finals. Uh, are you nervous at all? Yes, I am. Uh, actually, I'm not nervous at all. Uh, so this point, time I'm comfortable being up here. And Classic should be nervous because it's his first final. <laughs> So do you think Classic was lucky to get here? Yeah, frankly I do. Since Classic is uh, below me in skill, so I'm not nervous at all. How do you feel? You're actually older than Sue, but he's talking to you like you're a little brother. <laughs> She's mentioning that uh, Sue Sisera was here last time to support Sue, and she cried because Sue didn't win this time. Are you, you going to make her cry this time? <laughs> And she said, oh, look, I might have to because I'm going to be going for the championship this time. Yeah, but Sue's younger sister is smiling up there, he says. So you're going to make your younger sister upset and if you uh, lose this time? I think my sister will be crying this time around because I'm going to win the title. So no matter what she cries? No matter what she cries, I guess. <laughs> this is a fact, no, I don't think my sister's going to cry today. So, Gary, what are your predictions on tonight's games? <laughs> you know, I'm not sure who's going to win. Um, to see either of them. <laughs> Classic is maybe the big chance for you. Uh, do you guys think you can win? And here are the fans with his support on his side of the group. Hey guys, thanks so much for coming here and supporting me. And I'm going to show you how to defeat Sue tonight. And last time when I met him, uh, uh, when I beat him in the round of 16s, he was very upset. And I'm going to make him upset again here today, too. Any fans for Sue now? Same side. Some support on both sides there. <laughs> Sue, what, any words? I'm really happy there are a lot of fans here today. And I think my fans already know I'm going to be the champion. Are you going to turn on anger mode in this set? He says, he says, you know, I don't think I need to turn that on. But if I need it in the middle of the game, I might do that. Anybody here supporting uh, Sue having three runner-ups? And, <laughs> Sue, he said, are you thinking about the prize money and all the uh, all what you can spend all that prize money on and what a great player uh, you are to everybody? I know I've already had two runner-ups. I think it's time for me to win the titles this time. So please watch and enjoy. So a lot of drama here in Season 2. And it, enough of that. We're going to start this match between Classic and Sue. It is a best of seven, two teammates. <laughs> and now going into their booths. All right. Who do you think, Tasteless, who's going to take this? You know, I'm going to say, um, 
I think Sue wins this time. Yes, I, I think agree. I think it, it, it could be close. If but Classic at wins, this point it's in because time. it's like uh, you know, in team kills you get really weird play from both players. A lot of a lot of different ideas come out. So I right, let's like take a look at our though. four players they got here. Okay, so they are getting set up now. We will be starting this momentarily. All right. Uh, should be good, tasteless. You know, there's, like, so much that can be said about both these players. Of course, with Sue, you know, I think back to old Sue from StarCraft One, and I can barely remember him except that he was disappointing. The Zerg lineup in SKT1 in StarCraft One was extremely weak, and, uh, you know, Sue... And I S two and there was one other guy I can't remember his ID for some reason. This These is guys were like ago. they'd be put out in pro league every now and then and just lose like every time. These guys were not that impressive, but Sue stuck with it and here he is three times in a row. You can say he's the best Zerg in the world, and no one can really argue with that right well, now. Well, truth be told, the amount of time between each of the GSL finals, the fact that he's been in each of those finals, this is a long stretch. Hmm. This is not the period where we had, you know, GSLs like back to back each month. Yeah. This is where, you know, now a GSL takes uh, about two months, then we have a little bit of time off. Code A. This guy still is getting to the finals. And I'm going with the experience factor here. I feel like if you're somebody who's been in the finals back to back this many times, you should feel much more comfortable, much less mm. stressed. Um, the only possible stressor that you could have is if you were to lose again and start yeah. a history There's of getting like second that. place. But the way that uh, I see Sue and his personality and how confident he's played throughout this season especially, I don't think that mindset's going to be hitting him as much. Maybe if he gets second place from here, he'll, that'll be uh, a bigger factor. But for now, um, I feel like it's his time. He should be winning. You know, I think he's more of a stork than a yellow. Couple, couple second places to start off, and then he's just going to be around forever because the guy is just so ridiculously skilled. That's very true. Mm -hmm. Sue playing some of the best um, ZVZs and ZVPs we've seen here uh, in a long time. Really brilliant. Um, and so Classic's definitely got his work cut out for him. By the way, guys, coming up here, we're going to be picking the player of the month. You can send your game in, and we will be airing some of those games. Um, that's the right. very best of the best of those. So that's a great way yeah. for our viewers at home to interact with the show and, with uh, us out here in Seoul. We, ha we have the month's winner, which is uh, Yanis Klingele. So congratulations, Yanis. Yanis Klingele, yeah, I think that might be right. Yeah, I know how to say that. <laughs> <laughs> This makes me think of that old video of you uh, reading yes. names. Uh, that got a lot of views on YouTube now. Did you know that? Yeah. Long ago when our toast People was taking questions. People still link to me to it every couple months. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Answering questions on the internet from random viewers. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, guys, uh, check that out. It's going to be a lot of fun. We always have new great stuff coming up here uh, at, the, at Go On Me XP. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, check it out. Now, I want to, because everyone's talked about Sue a lot because it's it's pretty crazy, right? Three in a row, he's playing so well. You look at his play and you're like, well, this guy is definitely Sulky level at least, maybe even better than Sulky. Uh, that's great. We know a lot about Sue. We keep on talking about Sue every season because he's always in the finals. Yeah. Classic is someone that, like, most of his good play has come from Pro League where it's just like, you know, he goes out for a match and he does well. And not well enough that he's at the very top of the rankings, but still, he's done well, he's played good games, he's beaten good players. We've had players that have performed very well in Pro League for a while and not perform in the individual leagues. Like Flash, for instance. Yeah, exactly. And it's interesting to see that uh, does occur more often than you would expect. Yeah. But a lot of times in the Pro League atmosphere, you're still representing your team. Um, even if you lose, the team might not um, be knocked out entirely. So it's a different mindset, but it's great yeah. to see Classic here now uh, really is. kicking ass in this individual league and possibly about to become a champion. Also, historically, um, over about the past 18 months, we've had a serious cycle of uh, top-notch Protosses come That's up. That's right, and uh, Classic. like, And a lot of them not always staying around, but uh, being rotated out. So I want to see, is Classic going to be somebody, even if he gets second place here, is he going to be somebody we will see again in the finals down the road? We will see in the final four Look, down the road. I think that it's definitely a possibility. Some things that, uh, you know, I've, I've said these things a few times, but for instance, Classic was the number one draft pick 
once in StarCraft 1. And that means a lot because, you know, every, what was it, like two or three times a year, there was actually a draft, just like you see in like the NBA and yeah. stuff, um, where the Kespa teams would draft in StarCraft 1. And everyone was talking about this guy. His idea was If Classic back then, I believe. And uh, Eastro had that number one pick from doing the worst in Pro League. And they picked him right up, man. And he was very strong in the practice house. He was doing a great job. Didn't really make it in StarCraft 1. But the thing is, it takes years. And this was over five years ago that he was drafted. It takes years to really get your level up. And, you know, we saw him in StarCraft 2. He started out as a Terran player. But Terran in StarCraft 2 is actually nothing like Terran in StarCraft 1. Very true. It's Terran in StarCraft 1, a, a much more brittle, especially in the early game, Terran in StarCraft yeah. 2. There's a lot more flexibility, um, mobility, yeah, a lot of mobility with that. Yeah. Uh, like the Marauder makes everything much different. And in fact, uh, I, I do want to say that I feel personally that both Zerg and Protoss play more like Terran in StarCraft 1 than Terran in StarCraft 2 plays like Terran in StarCraft Yeah, 1. I would agree with that. So it was really smart of him to switch his race over, and he's had much better success since then. And it's really exciting to see what he's been able to do now. Um, all these Protoss players coming up with slightly different play styles, uh, really embodying uh, what Protoss have had in the past with success is the uh, ingenuity of the player has to come out with his, um, it's not just mastering, you know, a few set builds mm -hmm. and, and following a textbook path to, um, you know, how to play. Instead, you get people like Classic, their personalities come out in their play style. A lot of mind games come in there as well. Here's our map lineup. King Sejong Station, Ultra Team Stronghold, Frost, Habitation Station, Overgrowth, Merry-Go-Round, and Way Station. Yeah, it's, uh, let's see here. So... Kind of an interesting map line. Like King Sejong Station definitely has its pluses and minuses for both uh, both sides. And then Ultra Zeme, it's like, can you play a perfect Sky Toss? Because if you can, you're going to be fantastic there. Uh, if you can't, then Zerg is going to crush you. So I'll be interested in these first two maps. I think they're really going to set the pace of this. Because the first one kind of being something I consider even, and then into something where it like it shows what is your late game skill. And we know that Suze is amazing. Classic, we haven't seen as much from as we have with Sue, though. Looks like that game uh, is almost ready, in fact. So we're going to get this started uh, in a second. Classic against Sue here. So much on the line. If uh, Classic wins this, it would have been an incredibly quick path to the top, mm. considering his GSL Code S history, not so much his StarCraft history. Uh, with Sue, this guy is a household name at this point in time. If you're somebody who's been learning Zerg over the past year and a half, um, if you've even dabbled with that, then you're going to know exactly who Sue is. If yeah. you follow any competitive StarCraft, you're going to know exactly who Sue is. And he's here now. He lost the two times before this in the finals. Let's see if he can become a champion this time around. Game number one on King Sejong Station has now loaded up. Let's get out there. Tell your friends to tune in here for the Classic against Sue at Gong EXP. Hot 6 GSL Season 2 Final Classic versus Sue. Very loud crowd here today. Yep, we are packed here in the studio. And uh, we have the far spawns here on this map. So we have Zerg in the upper left, Protoss in the bottom right. And uh, we'll see how these guys choose to open up. I heard a pylon, which tells us Gateway expand. Mm -hmm. I saw a pylon. Oh, yeah. I see it now. See, they were zooming when I looked over and I heard it. <laughs> Some Sioux support here in the oh, audience. It's like a Sioux coupon. Clip that right out. Bring it to GSL Studio. <laughs> Buy one, get Sioux off. <laughs> Buy one, get Sioux free. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a classic joke right there. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Got to start this out right. Yep. So a pull first here from Sue on 14, it looks like. By uh, the way, welcome to the studio. Is that... What does that sign say at the bottom left? Oh, I didn't see it. Oh, my God. They're playing uh, Angry Birds. Yeah, and it What's looks the like the Zergling wants to eat the pig. He's launching a probe, not a bird. Did you... um? You played Angry Birds, right? Yeah, yeah. It's actually really you and I good. We both played actually a good amount of Angry Birds. Yeah, that was way back when. Yeah, we had good times. They don't. Did they still make though. They oh must God. have like a hundred of them out now, a right? Bajillion, million. Those trillion. guys like own a, own a small country now, right? Yeah. <laughs> ah, from New Zealand. He's lying. We're in Korea. <laughs> <laughs> Do not be fooled, audience. The yeah. broadcast is in fact happening in Seoul. 
All right, so here comes the Overlord. Um, it's just a very... Uh, as far as, like, the mind games of the opening build orders, Classic comes out on top here by going for a Nexus first into Gateway in the main base behind the Minerals. That's the greediest opener that Protoss has, and he's doing it against this pool first build. Uh, like a safety pool first, not a rush pool first. So, yeah, we only uh, have two great lanes situation out here. for for classic. We only got these um these two lanes out here now, mm -hmm. and he just throws out this hatch. So, uh, classic, yeah, a little bit greedier here. It looks like um, Sue trying to be safe. You know, you got to watch out for Protosses with some of the cheeses they can do earlier, the cannon rush yeah, and stuff like for that. Sure. Uh, especially you get to the level of play the classic set. I mean, you don't want to throw one game away because you simply weren't prepared for a cannon rush. Oh, totally. Like, and it, some players are really, really good at uh, cannon rushes. Now, classic, I guess we don't see him cannon rush as much as some other players, but uh, you know, it's it's almost hard to be like truly bad at cannon rushes. <laughs> you know, if you go hatch first, you might just lose it. That's very true. But there, it is possible to be truly good at this. Yes. If you're great with the timing and the placement. Yeah, SOS probably the best Dude, there you is You could six pull and he would still cannon rush you and beat you. Like, he just, he's so good at it. He was, <laughs> he was so godlike. Um, still is, I guess. Oh, this is interesting. So yeah. overall, Protoss have barely won uh, more than Zerg on this map. Now we've had a lot of games on this map, so yeah, uh, you can almost consider that it's even. Really, I mean, it's that's really close. Yeah, and a lot of it matters who's playing on the map as well. And I wonder uh, how many leagues that goes across. That might just be the GSL stats, but uh, King Sage on Station is now played all over the world in WCS. Uh, yeah, and it's a great map, by the way. Yeah, and it's in Pro League as well. Looky so. here, Artosis. We got well. a proxy pilot over there in the upper left, just outside the Zerg's vision. Um, now he does see the um, cybernetic core. And he sees the gates coming up here. We don't have anything made out of that pylon yet. I, he, it's Has very to be possible. A Stargate, right? I would think so. It'd be I, funny I, to proxy well, blink. Pro <laughs> no, that's what I was saying. They don't think if he's going to proxy any units out of there. And there's the Stargate now. But it looks like he wanted to get uh, the two gates up, uh, two additional gates at his entrance up before he started that Stargate. And this is interesting because uh, with the Stargate in this position, if this uh, doesn't do a ton of damage and Zerk finds it, uh, Zerk can get a pretty big lead here, knocking out the Stargate. Yeah. Uh, Zerk has a lot of opportunities. That's, that's if, for if, sure. If Protoss texts that and then loses it, uh, mm -hmm. Zerk has a, a large range of choices on, on how to um, dictate where the game's going to go. That's right. But uh, on the other hand, if he doesn't have a Spore up and only one Queen in that main base when the Oracle flies in, we're going to see like eight kills. <laughs> like a yeah. lot of kills. If you control that Oracle just right, you kill so many drones, it's actually it's, crazy. You know, Oracle, a lot of times in StarCraft, um, you know, it comes down to just a second or two. Mm -hmm. With an Oracle, it can come down to just you know a few milliseconds mm -hmm. uh, of, of it being there early uh, and catching somebody off guard. Because right now, you know, oh my god, that was a huge mistake by Sue. And that's, wow. I can't believe he actually lost that. Yeah, that was pretty bad. We didn't even mention the possibility of that dying because we just assumed it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, now he sees the Oracle. And he's banking the oracles. Oh, this is bad. Because Sue's going to have time to react. Oh, my God. This is so bad. You know, he should at least keep the oracle directly over that so he could see if something else could yes, see it. Yes, Because it has a higher this is a vision huge range. mistake. Yeah, it, exactly. It's got a bigger vision range. This is a Anything big blunder here. The Stargate could see the oracle over the Stargate. Exactly. So there's no reason to tuck the oracle down there to the bottom left. Yeah. Uh, a big mistake to start off the day here by Classic. This means that Sue should be more than prepared despite Sue losing that Overlord back there. Yeah, and he's actually waiting with two to scout what's going on here. Uh, with that Spore and a Queen, he's going to be able to kill some for sure, but not as many as, uh, you know, if he had maybe gone a little bit earlier. Driving out that first Oracle. Now, these Oracles are not doing enough damage here. In fact, only one kill on that Oracle that just backed away. That's not enough damage. Uh, Protoss is taking the third base now. Yeah, and he's got the pylon wall up and the cannon there. Zerg taking a fourth of his own. It's a really significant advantage. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, not advantage, but uh, a significant amount of money that he put into getting those two oracles. And if that's all that they do, you've got to count in also that he's losing the Stargate. And in fact, we saw the Spire going up, knowing that your opponent is not going to rally out Void Rays from there. He's not going to be able to make Phoenixes out of that stop possible Mutas either. So uh, very good choices we see coming from Sue, at least. Yeah, I... I have to say, um, with this fifth base being taken, um, I don't believe Classic's going to be able to contest it. We do see yeah. he's making some more gateways, so maybe he'll try, but I think even if he tries, it's a pretty futile attempt if he yeah. does. Um, and, and the problem is when Zerg gets on uh, five bases and has them all 
up and running, mining mm -hmm. from them. Yeah. Um, it, it's really hard to stop uh, for the Protoss who's on three. And by the way, the third base only just got up and running for Classic. I mean, he's just now having that blossom yeah. of gateways come out. This is um, a pretty bad spot here from Classic from here on out. A lot of this just goes back to that moment where he saw the Stargate, he saw the Oracle back there. Classic, really he's at fault for not um, having that Oracle over that. Stargate yeah. properly, so then when the Overlord comes and he sees it, he just rushes the Oracle That's in there right. and starts hitting uh, workers. At least you can do more than what he did um, Seriously. in this case. You, you get a lot more kills with one running in before a score, so definitely a mistake there. But he is pushing forward right now and going to be able to take out this one base uh, for sure. Now, there are more units being made by Sue, so I don't expect her to lose another base, but that was a strong move out by Classic. Yeah, nicely done there by Classic, and I like the fact that he's backing up now. Um, yeah. That's a sign of a good Protoss player. Uh, so many games, the players we see them, they get the base, they're like, oh, I'll go a little bit further. No, it's okay. Zerg's still ahead on bases, but uh, you won that battle. Now also make sure you win the war. Mm -hmm. So he backs up. I thought Sue was going to be a bit more prepared for that attack, actually. You can see now he would have been able to hold yeah. it, but um, Sue maybe getting a little bit too greedy there. Well, that's sometimes the nice thing about uh, going for five bases suddenly, right? Is that one of them lives. That's You're true. not going to lose both. Uh, but look at this situation. He's actually going into Mutas off of 27 Roaches against someone with a lot of plus two Blink Stalkers. Now, as far as armies go, you you know, I would say overall this, this Protoss army is really scary. Plus two attack, Blink, and plenty of force fields. You're not going to stop that with just 27 Roaches and, like, you know, a handful of Mutas. The Mutas are not going to be very consequential in the battle. Right. Oop, War Prism spotted there. Uh, you know, I thought Classic might try to squeeze out um, fourth base, but looking at the supplies, I gotta say otherwise, he's actually a bit behind here. Mm. Note that he's using the other um, hatchery that's at the fourth as a macro hatch. He's not using that to mine from just yet. Uh, a couple of oracles going to town on that uh, oh. on that hatchery, kind of funny. I'm trying to zone this army out right now. And nice those, force fields. Solid force fields. Yeah, let's see those meters don't do anything. Where is his mothership core though? I would love um, to see the mothership core. The mothership core is in the bottom center. Yeah, or I, actually almost in the middle of the map. When your opponent has mutas, there is definitely some value to keeping it at home to help defend against that. But if he can't warp out of here, this could be an army that he ends up losing. Okay, here he comes in now. Again, he, he has to be able to warp this army out. It's completely cornered. I mean, this is why you have to have the Mothership Corps with your army. He's not able to recall back. Yeah, that, that's a little bit rough. Uh, if he had brought that Mothership core once again, you know, he throws up the forest field wall, warps home, and now he's playing three base versus three base with a lot of supply. Instead, he has lost a lot of units. He lost all of his sentries, and as we've all known for a very long time now, if you lose all your sentries, you're in a tough spot against Zerg. Hey, it's like the reset button for Protoss. Yeah. Um, classic Panic now is, is stuck on three bases. Uh, Sue will most likely just now begin using this fourth base over here. We see eight drones just popped out. And now we're regrouping here with the Lings and the Roaches. Um, and from here, all Sue has to do is control the map and not let uh, Classic take any more bases. And it should be a pretty clear win for Sue. Well, uh, we will see. We have a lot of Phoenixes starting to get produced, so definitely could help out against these Mutas. There's a lot of Mutas out right now, though, so they can't do too much yet. It's going to involve a lot of Micro here for Classic. Oh, I'm surprised he's doing this. He's going to go all the way down here and try to hit the third base. Let's see if he can actually take it out. There is an Immortal with this army. going to be very strong against those Roaches. Phoenix is over here as well in a Time Warp. Yeah, and look at this, these roaches, they are fighting through that time warp. Some nice micro here coming out of Classic, trying to hold everything off. The mute is coming right back, uh, but it looks like he will chase them off for now at least. Sue is going to regroup over here. He may try to hit the third again. Um, we'll have to see. Mm. Well, you, you, another thing to note is that he, uh, Protoss is going to run out of money eventually over there. You know, uh, Sue's been also doing a pretty low econ for the number yeah. of bases he's been acquiring. Well, they've been picked off like pretty quickly by Classic so far this game. So yeah. he's had a hard time keeping that unit count actually up at what he wants it at. Uh, you know, it, it, this is kind of an interesting game, the place that this is at, because they've both traded big chunks of armies. We've seen many bases die from Sue. And, oh, God, that in control pylon getting under. Oh, my God. Oh, man. you got to have a Tastosis pylon by the in-control yeah, pylon. Yeah, Tastosis pylons just, back you up, yeah. even if you're in control. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Muta's regrouping now. 
And it looks like with a Roach army down here at the bottom, he may try to hit in two locations and try to spread out the Classic. Classic, you know, just barely mm. hanging on here. I gotta say, he's got good defense, but the real question is, is Classic ever gonna get a fourth base? Well, uh, you know, I think he is. He's finally getting that Fleet Beacon, as you say, and uh, as he gets that Fleet Beacon, actually gets Phoenix range. This is a huge amount of mutas that have been made. So he's going to be able to actually fight those off. And the economy is not good enough for Sue because his fourth base is actually very late because it got killed to make so many units, uh, so many corruptors, so many mutas that these phoenixes aren't going to work out. So the phoenixes will definitely do some work as soon as the phoenix range is done. Yeah, when the phoenix range is done, you're absolutely right. That's going to be pretty uh, impactful here as far as how you can push out that air army. It looks like... Well, let's see. Classic's actually going to go try out, um, try moving out the top here. This could give an opening for Sue to try to hit the bottom. Uh, well, he's just kind of flying around everywhere right now, trying to see yeah. what damage he can get done. He does have a decent amount of corruptors for the time being. Uh, but these Muta's efficiency is definitely going to go down, and that's why he's getting, uh, you know, pathogen glands. He wants to get out some, some infestors, because if he hits a nice fungal on that Phoenix slump, that can be a game winning move. And that could turn the game the so far upside down, and then the Phoenixes go out and take out all the overlords on the map. I mean, once you lose that air army, um, that could be it. Mm. So well, I mean, uh, you know, he's got him clumped, man, and we have Infestors on the way. Yeah, well, I, what I'm saying is um, if he does make a mistake, though, with that. Yeah. But yeah, with the Infestors, yeah, a good fungal, bam. Uh, you could even switch into Broodlords from there, wipe mm. up the ground army. There's so many options. Well, here come the Infestors. We'll see if they catch them. And, oh god, he's really clumped up right now, and wow, he catches quite a few of them. Another fungal going down. Beautiful! And then he catches all the rest as well. Ouch. Very, very painful moments there. And from here, Classic's going to try to uh, maybe hit the uh, north base, the fifth base, but no, he's going to back. No, he okay, he's deliberating. Now he's going to go back down over here. Yeah, he's um, going into that and, natural. And Sue uh, will be able to take out um, a lot over here. This is going to force Classic back. Now let's see if Sue actually goes to the bottom here. He does. Decides to turn around when there's a cannon there. But this is keeping Classic stuck at home. However, Classic does have a substantial enough army. He might be able to secure mm. this fourth base in the center right. Well, you know what? There's more Infestors on the way, which is definitely going to help out. And with all these Corruptors, he should be able to take out the Colossus since there's only one. Uh, Thermal Lance is on the way, but again, one Colossus. Is that going to be enough to stop all the, the Lings and Roaches? Probably not. Um, not at this point in time, at what least. What about all those Stalkers? It's <laughs> a lot. It is a lot. Uh, and now the fourth base for Classic is going to be hit. While um, Sue's kept him busy elsewhere with those roaches and lings, here come the phoenixes now, also hitting this uh, robotic ability. This is really good. Just delay the number of colossi that can come out here. Yeah, well, if you keep him on just one colossi, like he was even getting range there, not even getting a second colossi, which is a little bit strange of a choice. But that means that his lings are going to be way more effective going forward. Yeah, and even though this phoenix number is pretty impressive, uh, with lings out, the phoenixes really can't do much of anything. Yeah, well, Phoenix is, yeah, against what the Lings, pick up like a few pretty, legs, yeah. <laughs> pretty bad against Mass Mass Link. Well, right now we have Ultras on the way. And, of course, uh, Phoenix is even worse against Ultras. And, in fact, this army altogether, I mean, you have a lot of Lings, some Fungals, and some Ultras. It's going to do very well against this army because there's only two Immortals. We see no Archons. Uh, you know, it's just mostly Stalker Zelon. Here comes it, um, the expansion going down now in fifth. Nice. Uh, grabbing of the drones over here. You can see that uh, supplies now have kind of changed places here. Classic now in the lead. Sue starting to fall apart. If Classic can get up here and actually uh, stamp out this fourth base, yeah. Sue might be out of options. Yeah, I mean, all Classic has to do if he takes his base out is go back home and wait. His income is definitely getting very low. Now we do see a lot of these infestors being picked up before fungals get off. Also kind of attacking to a little bit of a choke point here. A lot of damage output from Classic. You know, and it looks like he's going to take this base out. Yeah, and he, the Zealot's only just now getting up there in the front, but from here he can blink away if he wants to with these Ultras, and it's a pretty easy micro game mm. from there, and I think that might be it for Sue. Yeah, that looks like that is, in fact, it. If he kills this base and all of these units, what's left? That's That should be it. I mean, let's see if Sue tries to do anything else to recuperate. I don't know what that would be. Um, it's now three base to four, and I believe probes are just now being transferred over to Classic's fourth base. Well, you know, four bases against three. That's going to be uh, really in favor of Protoss here. Mm -hmm. 
It's getting another Robo at the moment, adding in yeah. some more Immortals. This is pretty straightforward. Immortals and Colossi, and then a few Tier 1 units, Stalker, mm -hmm. Zealot, something to just get in the way. No sentries, really. Yeah, and against something like that, you're going to probably need a lot more Lings, but he can't really produce a lot right now, right? Yeah. Um, he needs all the minerals he can get to get an expansion up, and I don't think he's going to be able to hold that. Mm. And this is a great um, example of, of how to play Protoss correctly. He could have continued to attack. There's no need. Go back, defend, get more money, wait and see what the Zerg's going to do. And now we see Sue's going to long distance mine. So that's really how desperate Sue is mm. to to get any source of income here. So from here, it's pretty um, straightforward. Classic should not lose this under any yeah. circumstance. He just has to play safe. It, it's hard to imagine him dying here. There's just not enough units out there. We're going to have to see like beautiful fungals. Uh, the lings are going to have to get on top of those those immortals because there's six out. I can't and I don't know how died. that would happen. I just, I'm not sure how that would possibly happen here. Well, I think this next push, if Classic controls it right, he should have this. He's going to come up yeah. now. He's even got three Archons now, which are going to help out against those Lings just so immensely, especially since there's only 50 out, and he's got plus three attack. That melts Lings so oh, quickly. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> Does uh, Classic have adequate defense back at his fourth? He needs just a, a lot of cannons there. Mm. Looks like the Colossus rallies over there as well. That'll help. Yeah, if there's Colossus standing there, Lings will do nothing. These Lings are like dead Lings walking, man. <laughs> They're going to be one-shotted by these Archons. They're going to just wither up and die against <laughs> you basically know, everything. Here. The most effective way to do this is for Classic to wait for the hatchery to finish and then kill it. Mm. I would say going now is good because he's maxed. He's He's got to lose some army if he's going to get a better comp. So just go for it. Like He's in a good spot. Some great fungals coming down for sure, but just not enough units here from Sue. Uh, you can see the links are coming up a little bit too late. They're going to get hit by the Colossi and the Archon. There's nothing else Sue can do, and Classic wins! The first game here. Well done by Classic. I got to say, a bumpy game for both players. Yeah, you know what? He kept his cool, though. Overall, he lost all his sentries early on. But the important part is that he sniped that hatch. He got that down. And Sue never really had a solid four base economy, which if you're going to be trying to go for mutas and control the map, you can't do it off three bases. You actually you need like a four base economy or better to be able to properly play that way. And that's Classic Sue for you. Yeah. Um, I think Wink. Sue, Sue might have <laughs> he might have wanted to focus a little bit more on the economics once he got the fifth base up. I think he was a little bit too greedy on trying to punish the Protoss on three bases. Yeah, he needed to definitely play a defensive game right there when you're going up to five base. And, you know, he kept one of the fourth base up for a bit, but uh, the attack that came out of Classic was nice. Um, I'm wondering how the other games are going to go. We did see this one small error from Classic early on, and that was with the Stargate and then parking the Oracle a little bit out of the view mm -hmm. um, of where the yeah, Oracle could see it. A, that was if bad. they see the Stargate, they don't need to guess what you're going to get. They can just look. So that was um, a If he had bit of seen the Overlord there, he gets a, a nice, nice lead early on. Yeah, and then he at least knows he can attack in. Yeah. Anyways, we'll talk more about that after the short break. In a little bit here, we're going to go to game number two between Sue against Classic.